pineapple tonight. Ooh. Ooh, excuse me. All right, so we got Raquel Thomas. The first time we see Rock is when she pulls up on Jukebox. She pulls up on Jukebox, and this is interesting because we get a little bit of the story behind the scenes for Juke because we don't get Juke's personal story this week. Excuse me. We only get Juke's musical story. Now, Rock is doing like any other mother. Because when a kid is 15, don't answer this because that is a federal offense. Unless it says to the parents of, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't open anyone's mail. That is a federal offense. Just throw that out there for you. So unless it says the parents of or to care of, then you cannot open that up even as a parent. You got to give that to the kids. Now, this letter came in, and since Rock is the only one that lives there and is Canaan as her son, She's like, what's going on, Juke? Juke is like, oh, nothing much. You know what I'm saying? You nervous? Oh, man. You know, it's a performance. It's just like, Mo, whenever I get on these lives, I be nervous. Y'all. I be shy. Like, right? before I get on here with y'all, I be in the mirror. I got to slap myself a couple of times. I got to get focused, man. When I get on these lives, I be, I'm shy. Be on here like, hey, guys. I'm nervous when I get on these lives. I don't know what I'm going to say because I'm never prepared. I just get on here and just talk. So she's saying, Juke, are you ready? You good to go? She was like, well, I'm a little nervous, but not too nervous. You know what I'm saying? If you got a little bit of that white girl, I'll, I'll just kick the edge off. But she ain't say that. But she got on the chain. She got the J chain on that Auntie Rock gave her. So Rock is really that support for her. And when she sits down, she's like, man, you know, I, I wish you the best. I want to see the good in you, Jukebox. But she also has that letter that we were talking about. And she assumed that it was to Canaan. Any mail that comes to my house, any mail that comes to my house right now, my German address, if it goes through that slot, I'm not reading whose name it is. I'm opening it up. If that mail comes into my garage, I'm opening. I don't care who it's addressed to. If the mail goes through my mailbox into my garage, onto my flow, because to get in my garage, I got to get out of my car, open it up. Like my front door and my garage are the same doors. So I got to get out of my car, open up the main door, take the lock off of the garage door and open it up like that. So any mail that comes through that, I'm over. I don't care who is addressed to. If it comes through my mail, I'm opening it up. I'm going to see what the fuck is going on in there. And that's like rock. Well, Canaan ain't been living at the house. So she's assuming that any mail that's sent over there is probably Canaan. It's probably Canaan. And I'm like, okay, I see what rock is doing. But she opens it up, and this is where we find out that Rock knows about Juke going to the army. Brillo said, why can't she be this way with Kanan? Come on, Brillo. You know why. Man, that nigga Kanan, that nigga Kanan is a, re man, that nigga is rebellious, bro. <laughs> what do you mean? Why can't she be like with this Kanan? She was... At one point, she was like this with Kanan, but then they just went their own separate ways, man. She kept, she's, I think, I think the whole disconnect between Kanan and Rock is the whole Howard situation. He always thought that Defcon was his dad, and then he finds out that his dad is Howard. Think about it, Brillo. Howard is, it's not Rock, not, it's not Rock trying not to be a mother to Kanan. How can Kanan be a son to her when you told me to go shoot my dad and you didn't tell me that I was my dad? You see what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. I look at it from Kanan's standpoint. Kanan didn't understand Rock lying to him like this. Why would you go tell me to go shoot my dad? Like, there's no coming back from that. Like, I'm, I'm on my phone with my mom. Me and my dad, we text. Me and my mom, we get on the phone to call each other. My dad would be on the phone sometimes. But if my mom told me to go shoot my dad, I could never, ever, like, even if, if even if my dad did the most egregious shit, shoot my dad, I can't go shoot my dad. If you feel like he did something, you go to the police about it. I can't go shoot my dad. Like, I could never look at my mom the same as she told me to go shoot your dad. 
Hey, man, you go shoot that nigga. I'm not shooting my dad. Whatever you two issue is, you go shoot that nigga. Unless it's some shit like goddamn when we seen in uh, Menace of Society and I'm young and my dad wilding out or some shit like that and I got to grab the gun to save my mom. But other than that, I'm not, I'm not shooting my dad. So, I mean, she wants to be there for Kanan, but you got to also remember. You got to also remember season one. What did she say? Kanan, shoot this gun. That bullet's going to always. What kind of mother is that? I'm fucking with my mom. mom. Y'all heard my mom was crying because I wouldn't go snitch on niggas. Man, you think I can respect my mom if she told me to shoot a bullet in the universe? That bullet's going to come back. My mom was crying because I wouldn't snitch. You think, man, I'm about to go fuck with my mom because, yeah, man, get the fuck out of here. This 2003, 2004, my mom crying to go tell me to go tell on some niggas that I got into it with. Man, I told my mom, I'm, regardless of how my mom felt, I'm like, I'm not about to go tell on no niggas. But if my mom would tell me to go shoot my dad, man, I can't fuck with my mom after no shit like that. It's not that Rock doesn't want to be a mother to Kanan. It's just at this point, it's, it's she's too far gone. She's, you know what I mean. I, I'm with you, Brillo, on why she can't act like that with Kanan, but it's too late. It's too late. You see, it, it, y'all know what I mean. Like I'm with Brillo. Why can't she act like this with Kanan? But it's too late. You should have been acting like this with Kanan since the beginning. But in the beginning, the first thing we seen with baby Kanan grabbed the sock with some batteries and whooped the nigga's ass. Was it that serious? You could have just went and threw hands with that nigga. Kanan, you got to go fight this dude. If you lose, you lose. But she told this nigga to get a sock with some batteries, man. That's some adult shit. That's not no kid shit. So Kanan, this shit just been built up with him. But this is rock story, and we on her side right now, so I got to stick up for her. So she's looking out for a jukebox right now. She's like, damn, juke. If you're going to join the Army, I respect that. I can't tell you no. I can't be like, fuck, oh, don't. I mean, juke, don't do that. Don't, don't go better yourself. Don't get out of the hood. Bodies are dropping. Lulu didn't rob the liquor store. Your dad is in anger management. The feds is watching him. I'm fucking with the mob. I'm fucking with the Koreans. I'm fucking with the Chinese restaurants. You see what I'm saying? That's why Rock said I can't give you no life advice. And I respect Rock for that. I respect her for that. Now, her and Juke, they're getting real close. And she even says when Juke asks, hey, Rock, you want me to go look and, and ask about Kanan? No, 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 no. Don't do that. We're not here for Kanan. I want to be here for you, Juke. I want to be here for you, Jukey Juke. I don't care about none of that other stuff, Jupe. None of that, Juke. I just want to be here for you. I just want to be here for you. Now, I ain't got no kids, so I don't understand. But when it comes to my nephews, with them growing up, I always told them, man, just always hit up um. Man, no matter what, wrong or right. And I think it's easier because I'm just unk and it's not like it's my kids. So for, for me, whenever my nephews hit me up, wrong or right, whatever they got going on, they know they can always hit me up. Now, I mean, I know one of my nephews got into some stuff when he was in the military. And, you know, he hit me up and I gave him the right. I, I gave him the best advice that I could give him. You know what I mean? I'm not going to give anybody any hands out, but if they really need some help, then I'll definitely make sure that they straight. That's one thing I always did because I helped raise them. I'm only 11 years older than my oldest nephew. So, you know, he's supposed to be coming out here in May, but yeah, I always, I'm always going to try to make sure that I can give them the best advice. I joke on here, but even to the young brothers on here, if you hit me up on Instagram, you need some advice. I'm only going to try to give you the best advice from what I know. Now, I'm not recommending you do anything. All I can say is, hey, this is, this is the advice I got. But Juke is here for, uh, to hear what Rock got to say and Rock is looking out for it, And I respect that. Now, the next time we see Rock though, we got to take off that goddamn auntie hat and we got to put on that motherfucker on let's get in the street hat because detective howard shows up now howard is showing up he's like hey hey yo 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 what up rock 
She's like, nigga, that nigga Lulu is on the loose. Lulu is on the loose. We got to find Lulu and we got to figure out what the hell Lulu is doing, where he's at, because it's all going to come back on us. Now, Howard already knows that everything is tied in with them. And when she starts talking about, <laughs> when she starts talking about Chantel, you hear that nigga Howard say, hey, man, hey, 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 I don't want to know nothing about that, man. I don't want to know nothing about that. One thing I can say, though, we need like 15 likes. While I take this little brief intermission, let me get 15 likes, man. That ain't too much to ask for. I just spilled my drink on my leg, spilled my drink on my book. Now I got to drink this little high noon to recover. Y'all can hit that like button. Now I just need 14 more. I can see, hey. I don't know if y'all know. I can see what y'all doing on the backside, 13. What up, Zay? Oh, shoot. Now, Rock is in here and she's talking to Howard. Now, she keeps telling Howard, look. All of this is coming back on both of us. So you need to help us find Lulu or we're just going to be asked out. For the next couple of days, next couple of weeks, or whatever the feds come and pick us up. Now, Howard doesn't want to know anything else about Chantel. And this is where I'm telling y'all we're doing a little side quest. We're going to go into Howard's story also because it's part of Rock's story. But Howard is like, hey, man, I don't want to know nothing else about Chantel. Because when you want to, when, when, when they start asking you questions, you want to be able to deny shit. So that's why even... Even if you know somebody committed a murder, as long as they don't tell you that they committed that murder, hey, nope, they ain't never tell me nothing about that. I had no awareness of that. I don't know nothing. Uh, whatever they did, they did. Whatever Lulu did, to the, I don't know what they did. Y'all saying that Lulu did something? I don't know. I, don't, I ain't heard nothing. I ain't seen nothing. So Rock is basically, and this is her story, so I got to tell y'all the truth. I can't lie to y'all right now. Rock. What Rock is doing, some people call it playing at both sides. Some people tell me Mo is a part of the game. But for me, I'm just looking at it like this is straight survival mode. This is straight survival mode what Rock is doing. Because she's trying to implicate Howard on all of this shit. Now remember, her and Howard don't fuck around. They got a kid together, but she don't fuck with Howard. Howard's been trying to look out for her and Kanan since the beginning of time, since he found out that that was his child. Now, Rock is saying, listen, this is going to come back on all of us. So if we don't figure this out, then we ain't going to get right. He don't want to know about Chantel because he knows that's going to lead back to him with Detective Pink. So Rock is saying, all right, this is what we're going to do. We got to find Lulu. After we find Lulu, we can move forward. But till then, I got to go to the goddamn performance for my niece, Jukebox. Now, they go up there. She up front. Woo woo! Ah, ah, some good shit right here, y'all. Let's get it cracking. Just get it cracking. Shout out to Butter. Marvin in here. He going crazy. You know he the father of the year right now. He just surpassed goddamn Howard. Howard ain't talked to Kanan in like two seasons. So uh, I was about to say Malcolm. Marvin is the father of the year right now. Rizzo said that song was lit. What? Hey, I might, I might wait till we get on jukeboxing them, but just rate what that song was. Rate what y'all think that song was, because Rock is up here showing some love. Hey. <laughs> Oof. Oof. I don't even know how to whistle like that. I don't know how to whistle like that, but fuck it. Let me see. Uh, let me, do we got something for that? Yeah, we got something for that. Are you okay? Oh, <laughs> well, they out here and they watching. They watching Crazy Sexy Cool. So we like, all right, bet. They doing it. I ain't going to lie to you. 
a fifty. Put them together. On some, I know this this is off topic right now. Fifty. Put them together and just put out some singles. Put out some singles. This shit will go viral on TikTok. Motherfuckers will be doing the dances. Well, unless they with, uh, I think it's with Universal. If fifty ain't with, well, fifty's independent now. If he ain't with Universal, put this shit on TikTok. This shit will go viral. Let people do the dances. This motherfucker blow up. This shit will go platinum on t- uh, on TikTok. That's just a little bit of marketing. 50, if you need your boy, holla at your boy. 50, I got you. I can get you on that marketing. You know, I got a little background in international trade. I got my master's in business, 50. Holla at your boy. I know a little bit of something, something. I ain't the smartest nigga, but I know a little bit of something, something. I can put some money in the pocket. I can talk about power, 50. Holla at your boy. You know, they say they say that this nigga Moby pocket watching. But that's only because I didn't took a couple of counting classes. That's only because I fuck with the numbers, 50. Holla at your boy. We can get you right on here. Yeah. Call me. So jukebox and them, they doing their little two-step. But we got to continue on because this ain't rock story. Now, after the show, after the show, Kanan runs into Marvin. Kanan runs into Marvin. What's up, Kanan? How you been, man? You seen Jukebox doing her thing. But he's basically just slowing her down. I think that this is a ploy by Rock. Hey, you go around, you stop Kanan, I'll pull up on him so we can see what he's talking about. Now, Rock shows up. And this is where we get the whole thing that we've seen this week. We've seen this this week, y'all. These are the clips that they dropped. So for us, let me see. So we can get an understanding of what the hell was going on this week. You know, Roddy gonna see the world like normal people, can't I trust him more, I trust you. He killed his own brother. It's not what I heard. I heard it was you that took out me. Put him down, had them Italian motherfuckers burn him so you could take all his work. Now, this is Rock's story, so I can only go off of Rock's perspective. I can't talk about what Kanan is talking about because I don't know what Kanan is talking about. I can only go off of Rock's perspective. But when Rock heard this, do y'all know this shit sent chills down her spine to see her own son turn his back on her and on top of that, tell her that this nigga can make calls? To get her to fuck up out of here. They'll take her to places that she ain't never seen. I'm not no mother. I'm not no father. But I can only imagine. That my hand. This is in the power. This is not real life y'all. But I can only imagine. Someone talking to me like that. And my hand just somehow winding up. Cocking back, reaching back to the heavens on earth, and slapping the shit out of somebody for talking to me like that. Now, I don't have no kids, so y'all can't say, Mo, you that's fucked up. I don't have no kids. So I'm just saying, I can only imagine if a child or someone talked to me and my arm didn't just. This nigga is disrespectful. This is Rock's story. So I can only tell y'all from Rock's perspective and what she wanted to do, but she couldn't do it because Rock, not Raquel, Rock had restraint because we were in a public environment. And you know how moms are. I'm not going to whoop your ass in here so motherfuckers can call CPS on me, call the police on me. I'm going to find your ass, Kanan. Find your ass. And I'm going to get on your ass. And that's why Marvin said, you going to let him talk to you like that? What? You going to let him talk to you like that? All of us was thinking, no matter how much of a fan we are of Kanan, we were all thinking the same thing Marvin was thinking. You going to let this nigga talk to you like that? Uh, uh, I heard it was you that took out me. Put him down, had them Italian motherfuckers burn him so you could take all his work. You shit around and been dead. You done. Out of business. You don't decide. I'm done.
Harvey said, you gonna let this nigga talk to you? You gonna let this nigga talk to you? Time out, time out, time out. Rock, do something. When Jukebox got out of line with Marvin, now I'm not condoning what Marvin did. Marvin got on her ass. When Diana got out of line with Monet, I'm not condoning it, but Monet got on her ass. When Tariq got out of line with James St. Patrick, Ghost got on his ass. I'm just saying, Rock, you can't let him get away with that, but that leads back to what Brilla was talking about, asking why can't she be like that with Kane, and she's trying to. But listen to how this nigga is talking to his mama. Listen to how Kanan is talking to his mama. Brother, it's not what I heard. I heard it was you that took out me. Put him down, had them Italian motherfuckers burn him so you could take all his work. This shit would only been dead. You done. Out of business. You don't decide when I'm done. And they say that I be giving Rock a hard time, but listen to how Kanan is talking to her. Listen to how get put a one in the chat if you talk to your mama this way. Put a one in the chat if you talk to your mama this way. Put a seven in the chat if you ain't never spoke to your mama in this language, this tone, this terminology. Put a one in the chat if you talk to your mama like a real nigga. Put a seven if you ain't never talked to your mama like that. Rock, you gonna let this nigga talk to you like that? <sighs> and they say they say that Mo just be talking shit they say that you can't take what I'm saying seriously. All I ever do is tell you what's going on on the screen. That's it. I didn't talk to Rock that way. I didn't make up Kane and talking bad to her. I didn't do none of that. I can't lie to y'all about that. This is Rock's story, but we had to point out that this nigga Kane and don't give a fuck. I didn't make this up. This isn't more joking around about Raquel Thomas. I can only tell y'all what I saw on the screen and Rock just got disrespected. Even Marvin looked at his sister and said, you gonna let him talk to you like that? That's not me making this up. That's not me going in on Rock. That's me telling the truth. I can't do anything but tell the truth. That's it. I, I didn't... I, I didn't tell Kanan to say that. Kanan said that. It's 
know what I heard. I heard it was you that took out me. Put him down, had them Italian motherfuckers burn him so you could take all his work. You should around and been dead. You done. You done. Out of business. You don't decide. I'm done. <laughs> I, I I didn't make this up. That's Kanan talking to Rock like that. I didn't. Y'all can't look at me and say, "Mo, ah, oh, man." Blah, blah. I didn't. I didn't make up nothing. You don't decide when I'm done. Don't don't say Mo's making up nothing. I didn't say that. Kanan said that. Marvin looked at her and said, you gonna let him talk to you like that? I take my belt off. I don't know. And Marvin kind of took a low, he took a, that was a below the belt jab where he told Kanan, I don't know who your dad was, who he is, who he gonna be. I'll take my belt off. Basically saying, I don't know who Rock was fucking with. I really don't know who your daddy is. If it's Malcolm, if it's Defcon, if it's Hop, I don't know who the fuck your daddy is, but I'll still whoop you in here. You disrespecting your mama like that. And Rock ain't say nothing. But hey, you know what they say? They say don't take Mo seriously. They say don't listen to that nigga Mo. But all I can tell you, they said Power called me up today. They said, they said, they said look, Mo, we got a lot of people recovering and covering the show. They recovering from last night because it was a good ass episode and they're covering the show, Mo. But what we want you to do is tell the truth. Don't get on there. Don't you lie tonight. Don't you tell them any fibs. Don't you make up any stories. They said, Mo, we want the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I said, man, that's what I've been doing since 2018. I ain't never told a lie. Well, there was one time I did lie. There was one time I did lie and said that I was moving 15 bricks a day. It was more like 15 bricks a week. I did lie at that point. But I said, I will never lie. I will only tell you what I've seen on the screen, and I won't make up anything. They said, Mo, we appreciate that. And for that, fuck you. And I said, all right, fuck me it is then. Well, Howard got Lulu at the crib. We on the clock. We got about five minutes left with Raquel. Yo, listen. This is what we could do, Rock. We could just throw it all on Marvin. If we throw it all on Marvin, it'll protect me, you, and Kanan. Now, one thing I got to call out on Rock is, Rock told him here, what did she tell? Now, now I want y'all to tell me. What did she tell Detective Howard about turning Marvin in for the, for the bodies? Someone tell me, what did Rock tell Howard when he said, Let's put it all on Marvin. Someone tell me that, please. Someone tell me, because I can't remember. I didn't watch with the caption, so I couldn't read and see what exactly she said. What did Rock tell Howard when he said, let's put it on Marvin? Marvin's just going to have to take one for the team. Someone tell me, what did Rock say? Because I like I like asking you guys because you guys pay a little more attention to me. I do got like three questions. I got that. Well, I technically I got four, but we'll ask that. It will still link back to him. 
she did say that Harper, but she also says something else. It's, it's referencing back to Marvin. It's referencing to Marvin. What did she tell Howard about Marvin and her family? I want to see if you guys know because, like I said, I was listening to it. I couldn't, I couldn't actually remember. Damn, zoom in if you don't know. No. Howard with slime out to play Marvin in Big Man. Hey, this nigga. Hey, Howard came over here. He's like, look, let's just put it on Marvin. He's gonna take one for the team. He'll understand. But what did, what did Rock say after he told her, let's put it on Marvin. He'll take one for the team. I want to hear. I want to hear. I I need to see it because I want to make sure that I ain't you know saying I ain't making up nothing to bullshit. And y'all know what I'm talking about, and y'all trying to avoid it. Nina said, "I know." No, I don't know, Nina. What did she tell Howard? Someone tell me what she tell Howard. That's all I'm asking. What did she tell Howard after Howard said, let's blame it on Marvin? Yeah, she's not giving up her brothers. Along the lines of that, all, she said, I'll never sell out my brothers i'll never turn out my brothers i never give up family not turn out but i never turn in my family now what what was kind of suspicious to me about that whole segment was she said she would never turn her brothers in or turn on her brothers or on her family but why would rock because you guys always think i'm making up stuff you guys always think i'm hating on rock let me ask you this why would Rock tell Howard she wouldn't ever give up her family? Right? She said, I would never give up my family. I would never turn on my family. I would never turn my family in. I would never give my family to the police. But follow me. I'm going to connect the dots for y'all so y'all ain't got to do it. Because y'all tend to forget everything that was said within the dialogue. Well, one thing I do is I watch this shit with the captions on and I listen to it as an audio book. So here she tells Howard, I would never turn in my family. I would never give up my family. But however, we just heard her tell Kanan I can make a phone call to CPS. They said, Mo, you think that Rock is setting everybody up? Why would she tell Howard she wouldn't give up her family but threaten her son by calling CPS? Knowing if CPS is called on Kanan, this nigga's going off to a boy camp. I don't make nothing up. I tell you what I saw on the screen. Why would she tell Kanan, I'll call CPS to get you jammed up after she put a gun in this nigga's bag where he could potentially get expelled from school and go to jail facing a goddamn rap sheet? Tell him, I'll call CPS and let them know that you threatened them and it'll have you sent up. But she just told Howard she wouldn't turn in her family. People keep saying I'm making up stuff. I don't make up shit. I tell you what I saw on the screen i heard her tell kanan i would call cps and get your bitch ass locked up oh my goodness mo calm down it is early in the night you supposed to be on rock side but you just telling the story that's all i can do is tell the story all i can do tia says cps is not the feds mo stop do you not know if kanan gets in trouble with cps he's going to jail He's facing a case right now. The only reason Kanan is out is because he went to his mom and the CPS had to come over and monitor him. Episode 7, CPS showed up. If Kanan wasn't going to be at the house in episode 8, Kanan was going to jail. What are we talking about? I remember everything. 
Matter of fact, I'll go bring it up for you guys because I've been waiting on this moment. I've been waiting on people to say that, Mo, you're bullshitting. I've been waiting. I said, Mo, don't you bullshit. Mo, you go find out the truth. Mo, you go tell them like it is. I said, okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Dun, 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 apartment. Dun, 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 dun. Lulu, Marvin Scratch's dad came and bought a eight where's eight at? What happened episode eight just last week? Kanan got 24 hours to get to the house or the nigga is arrested. The gun will go on his case file and the nigga will be charged with a gun at school. What are we talking about? His mama just told him, if you, I'll call the CPS on your ass. CPS already came knocking on the door because Kanan has been violating. Kanan is going to jail if he gets in trouble with CPS anymore. And Rock, not only that, said that he was violating the CPS curfew and the orders she said that she was going to call about this nigga threatening the cps officer so not only was Cannon going to go to jail for the gun he was going to go to jail for ronnie threatening the cps so yeah it's not the fair but state jail and having a gun on your case file for the rest of your life is just as bad as the feds now the feds you got to do 80 percent of your time States, you might have to do 60%. You could probably get a GED and get out on 40. But Kanan would have had a record at the age of 16 because Rock just told him she would call CPS after Kanan was living back in the apartment, knocking down Crystal, smoking a good blunt, living his life, and his mama called CPS. This will be the second time that she called CPS on top of the time that she put the gun in this nigga's bag that caused all of this shit. Everything leads back to Raquel Thomas, and people say that I'm making it up. I don't make up shit. I tell you what happened in the show. That's all I can do. If Kanan would have got in trouble in episode eight, he was going to a boys' school. He would have had the gun on his record. Yeah, he's a minor, but but he would have been in the, uh, the boys' school till he was an adult. If you're still in the system as an adult, it is no longer sealed. If Rock was to call and he would have went to jail, he would have actually went to jail and his case wouldn't have been sealed anymore because he wouldn't have been a minor. He would have became an adult and it would have opened up once they transferred him into an adult system. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's why you subscribe to my channel. I do the dirty work. Y'all throw it out there. I'll do the dirty work. I'll connect the dots. Don't worry about it. That's what I'm here for. This is Rock's story. But Rock said that she wouldn't give up her family to Howard, but she was willing to turn her son into CPS and put a goddamn case on this nigga. Am I making it up or am I just telling you the facts? You decide. <laughs> you decide. Damn, hey, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you. Damn it, I'm good. I'm good as a motherfucker. <laughs> I'm good as a motherfucker. Where my hat at? I can only connect the dots because uh, Rock is a powerful woman. Rock is powerful. See, we on Rock story. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit, Mozzie. We'll debunk the Rock being powerful. Now, Rock is moving some weight, but is she powerful? Rock works for a nigga that works for a nigga. Don't ever forget that. Don't ever forget Rock works for a nigga that works for a nigga. Rock works for the Koreans via the mob. So let's not make it seem like she's too powerful. Because if it wasn't for the Koreans, she wouldn't have no worry. If it wasn't for the back of the Stefan, uh, Stefano, she wouldn't have no worry. If it wasn't for Joaquin giving the word to go kill Juliana, she wouldn't be able to do nothing. That's why she had to go ask for permission. She ain't that powerful now. Let's not forget that Rock is still a worker. 
<laughs> Rock is still a worker. She's a higher level worker, but she's still a worker. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget that, y'all. Let's not get carried away. Rock is doing her thing. Rock is navigating through the streets, but let's not forget that Rock works for a nigga that works for a nigga that works for a nigga. <laughs> Rock is baby. She, she got more power than her brothers, but let's not forget that Rock ain't really like that. All right, so after that, the last part that we seen Rock, they turned... Uh... Not Rock ain't no queen pin yet. Rock is moving weight, though. Rock is moving weight. She's not a queen pin yet. We'll talk about that once we get on Marvin's story because Marvin is actually dealing with the day-to-day -day operation. But this is where she told uh, Howard she's not going to turn in her brothers. And um, she comes in here and Lulu's begging for his life. Lulu's talking about, man, don't kill me, man. Please, man, please kill me. Don't kill me, man. Marvin, man, don't tell her. Tell her don't kill me, man. Please, 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 man. Which y'all think was going through Rock's mind? Because, yeah, we have, what, about 40 minutes? All right, yeah, we're going to speed this up, knock this on out. What was going through Rock's mind in this point and with them driving the whip? Because she kept looking back and she said, Lou, you did this to yourself. I kind of, I ain't gonna lie to you, like from Rock's standpoint, I know Rock doesn't want anything bad to happen to Lou. The same from Marvin's standpoint. It's like, we want the best for Lou, but God damn, Lou, you fucking up, man. And for Rock, for Rock, it, it, I know we were just, we were just talking about, okay, is Rock a queen pin? Not yet. She has potential to get there. But like I said, she's working with the Koreans and Stefano. But she's very high powered as far as when it comes to like the streets. So for her, it kind of sucks because, you know, Stefano and Quan are going to be like, hey, man, your brother's out here wilding out. Even though they don't know that he's been telling her anything, she has to get rid of him. So I understand where they're coming from. Like I said, we're on Rock's story, so I'm on Rock's side. But from the family member standpoint, I don't believe that they're getting rid of Lulu. Like they got to be either taking him to rehab, but they can't check him in up under his name. They got to like, they can't even check him in under Lewis. They got to check him in under a name. Like, mm. Tyler Perry. If I'm going to check my brother, in, I'm going to check him in up under Tyler Perry. <laughs> it sounded like somebody was outside. All right, that's rock story, man. I guess we're gonna we'll find out next week. Do you guys think that Lulu is gone? I know we talked about it with Lulu, but do y'all think that Lulu is gone or is I mean, Lulu still gonna be here and it ain't ain't worried about nothing? You know what I mean? Because I don't believe that Lulu is gone. They're not gonna get rid of Lulu that easily. They're on their way to Virginia. You know, I didn't even think about that, Elder. You think Auntie's gonna let them stay over there in Virginia? Hey, what y'all think? Elder said that they on their way to Virginia. Remember, Auntie's down there, so Lulu gets a new start. All right, so we all in agreement that Lulu ain't dead. Lulu's probably just going to get a fresh start. They either sending him to rehab or taking him to Virginia with Auntie, right? 